Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this three coloured coaster. It's a lot more simple than it looks and it creates a beautiful coaster that's going to be eye-catching on everyone's table. Now before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you never miss out another one of my crochet tutorials or patterns again. Let's find out the materials we're going to need to make our very own Tripoli coaster. Now I'm going to be using some Aran weight yarn um, in three different shades and I've chosen my favourite which is of course, let me just change those around because that's the order I'm going to do them in. It is one of my absolute favourites. I love paint box yarns. They're such good value. They're usually on some kind of special offer if you're buying in bulk certainly. They've always got their value packs and of course um, when it's on special offer at 25% off it, I think it's down to at the moment when I'm film, filming this I think it's down to £1.87 a ball which is a great price for a quality acrylic yarn. So it is 100% acrylic and as I said it's an iron weight or a worsted in the American sizing size 4 and it comes in quite a large quantity so it's a 100 gram ball and I've chosen three different colours so we've got misty grey which is shade number 203 I'm giving you these backwards so that's my colour C colour B for me is going to be ballet pink which is shade number 252 and then my absolute favourite that I used in the hodgepodge blanket is the bubblegum pink in fact I used all of these colours in the hodgepodge blanket and this is shade number 250 so you don't need a huge amount to make one coaster. If you're making a set of four, as I will be, you're going to need a little bit of each yarn. I think it works out at about a total of 35 metres per coaster across the three colours. So not a huge amount. This ball has been used for something else, but I've made three or two, two or three coasters out of these already. And there's more than enough yarn left. So hook wise, we're going to be using a five millimetre crochet hook. Today I'm going to be using my tulip just because it was the closest one to me. Uh, you're going to need a pair of scissors because there are some ends to snip and under here I have a darning needle as well. Depending on how confident you are with um, managing your colour changes I would recommend some stitch markers as well. I'm going to be using my lockable ones. So these ones that look like tiny little nappy pins if you've got safety pins they do the same job. It just means that they don't come off if you're flinging your work around as, as we are going to be doing because we're working in the round for this project. I'd recommend four stitch markers just so you can mark the start of the round as well as the three colour changes as well. You might get away with three but as, as you're moving around but if you're walking away from your project at any point you are going to need the full four and you need to know which one. So I've chosen a different one that's going to be which is a heart shaped one. I think I got this free with a crochet magazine. Um, this heart shaped one is going to mark my first stitch of each round because the colour changes for this are worked in each round that we work. It's going to make more sense as we make it. So let me just push my yarn back, gather all of your materials and let's get started. So we're going to start round one with our colour A and you can choose to make a magic ring. I'm actually going to recommend that you don't do that and instead just make a slip knot and place that onto your hook and we're going to make a ring using a chain of four. So once your yarn is on your hook and you've got your slip knot, we're going to yarn over the hook and bring it through four times to create our chain of four. So that was one, two, three and four. And we're then going to slip stitch into the top of the chain next to where our slip knot is. So we just insert the hook back under that top loop of that first chain that we made, yarn over, bring our yarn through and straight through to create that slip stitch and it creates a lovely little ring that we can work into. So we need to make sure that we're working into the correct place and you can see that there are two holes, one where we've slip stitched and one, a bigger one underneath which is the middle of our ring which is where we're going to be wanting to insert our hook. So we're going to continue round one by making a chain of one. Now this chain one does not count as a stitch and we're going to work three half double crochets, that's a US half double crochet, the same as a UK half treble crochet, into the middle of that ring. So we start by yarning over the hook and we're inserting our hook into that centre of the ring, not into this hole here, right into that centre. So we yarn over and insert our hook. You'll notice that my tail is held against that ring that we formed as well. We then yarn over the hook and bring it back through. So we have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to create that first half double crochet. 
We're going to make a further two in colour A. So we yarn over and again we're reinserting our hook into the middle whilst working over our end. So we yarn over and insert, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So there's number one and number two. And then finally we're going to do a third one in colour A. So we yarn over and insert our hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. Now we're actually finished with colour A, so I'm going to bring my loop up with my hook, remove my hook before placing a stitch marker into that loop so that it can't come undone. That's why I use these lockable stitch markers because then I can pull that out of the way and move the working yarn almost out of harm's way. We're going to now continue round one, but to do that we're going to be joining colour B. For me that is the ballet pink, so I'm going to get that ready. Again I'm making sure that my end is held against the ring. I'm going to insert my hook, kind of hold that in place with my finger, place my new colour with the tail at the back of my hook, bring that through, find the working yarn and then make a chain of one and that just secures that into the centre of that ring, pull on the pink, the lighter pink and then we are ready to continue working a further three half double crochets but this time in colour B. So we yarn over the hook and insert. Now this time I'm working over both the lighter pink and the darker pink holding those against that ring. I'm going to yarn over, bring that yarn back up, yarn over, pull through all three loops. You can see there's a bit of gap between these so if you need to grab everything together and pull that work around and it should shift closer to where we need it to be. I'm going to work a further two half double crochets in colour B. So we yarn over and insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And for our third one we do the same, yarning over and inserting back into the centre, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We are done with colour B, so we can bring that loop up with our hook and just secure with our stitch marker. You can tell which is the right side of your project because your ends will be away from your hook hand. So if you get confused or you, and that's easier to move those all together next back next to those colour A's. It gives us a bit more space to work into as well. So we're now going to work the same three stitches in colour C. So reinsert our hook, making sure that those ends are against our hook. And just as we did with colour B, we're going to place that yarn with the tail facing away from us and just bring it back through the centre of that loop. Make a chain of one just to secure that. And I'm going to grab that end to place it with all the others. And then we are ready to proceed with our three half double crochets in colour C. So we yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to do that again for a further two half double crochets. That's number two and for a third time number three and we are now done with colour C so I'm going to bring that loop up and just secure that with a third stitch marker. That's what we talk about pulling in the centre. Okay. So as you can see now you've got three colours all worth the same three half double crochets and what we need to do is to close this hole in the middle. So if you've worked over your ends as I suggested, if you find your colour A and just pull, it will close the centre of the ring. You can then pull on the other two colours just to make sure that they've been pulled through correctly. You can find them. It's a bit endy this pattern but it is worth it. There we go. So make sure that you have the right side of your project facing you and we're rotating to continue 
working colour A. So we're not going to work into these stitches that are left, we're just going to continue. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker in colour A, place that there, and insert my hook back into the loop before bringing it down ready to work. And we're looking for that first stitch in our lighter colour. So we know we've got one here, so one, two and three because we're going to start by working two half double crochets into the first stitch. So we're going to yarn over the hook, go under both loops of that first stitch. So once you've inserted your hook, we're going to yarn over, bring our loop through, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and we're working a second half double crochet back into the same stitch. So we yarn over and we're reinserting our hook into the same stitch again to work our second half double crochet. Oops. I fell off, there we go. Bring that loop through, yarn over and pull through two. And we're gonna repeat that by working two half double crochets into the next stitch as well. So we yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the same stitch, bring your loop up, yarn over and pull through two. So you can see that it's creating an extension of that first round that we worked. Now it's probably a good idea, which I should have done a moment ago, is to mark that first stitch that we worked. Let me mark that loop because we're finished with our colour A. So I'm just going to secure that once again. We're going to leave this marked stitch unworked. And I'm going to mark the first stitch that we made in the round. So we did one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to mark that first stitch of the round so we know that when we, when we get back to it, we're in the right place. And that's why I've chosen a different stitch marker, just so it's obvious to me which one is the first stitch. Now you don't have to mark each of your loops if you don't want to, but just make sure you're leaving a nice big loop so that you can't pull it out as you're working. This is quite a short project, so it's not a problem to leave to leave a long loop and just continue crocheting around. So I'm just getting ready to repeat these stitches with colour B. So I've removed the stitch marker, placed it back on my hook, and I'm ready to work two half double crochets in the next two stitches. So yarn over the hook, insert, Yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and we repeat that by working a second half double crochet into the neck into the same stitch, sorry. We repeat that by working one half double crochet into the same stitch. And then we're working two half double crochets into the next as well. So we just insert, bring a loop up, pull through two, three, sorry, and repeat that again. So now we have a bit further along on our next colour. If you want to, you can continue to secure your loops or you can go brave and just bring up a nice big loop. We're repeating this for a third time on this round, working in colour C. I'm just going to make sure the ends are out of the way and pick up my colour, my working yarn, before working those two half double crochets into the next two stitches. So that's one and two and again one and two. At this point you've got something that's a little bit triangular shaped. I'm just going to pull in my tail again to close that hole. And it looks a little bit triangular but you can see that we're back to we're leaving one stitch unworked and here is our first stitch of the round that we started. Again, you don't have to mark that. If you're good with your counting, you'll be absolutely fine. But if you're worried or you have to step away, I would always make sure you mark that first stitch. I'm going to secure colour C before I move on. Because that's the end of round two. At this point, you should have um, four half double crochets for this round in each colour. The reason that we're marking this first stitch is not because this is where we're going to continue working. In fact, it's just so that we know we're ending our previous round in the first, in the right place, sorry. 
So you can remove that. You don't have to mark that if you don't want to. You can just mark your loops and keep them safe. For me, it just, I know obviously where my last increase is. That's where the end of the round is. But it's a nice idea to keep an eye on where you started. So I'm just going to remove that stitch marker and we're going into round three, beginning with colour A. We're going to start by working one half double crochet into the next stitch. We then work two half double crochets into the next. So that's one and two. And we repeat that. So we work one half double crochet followed by two half double crochets in the next. So that's one and two. I didn't mark that first stitch again because I'm just so used to not doing it. So in this round, we're doing six half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just so we know that we've ended in that right point. You don't have to mark that first stitch. So we're finished with colour A. So I'm just going to secure that loop before I bring up colour B. And we can continue. And we're repeating the same for each of the colours. So we're working one half double crochet into the next stitch, followed by two half double crochets into the next. One half double crochet, followed by two half double crochets into the next. And that works our six half double crochets that we need for the increase in this round secure that loop or just bring it up nice and long and then we're ready to work our final colour. So each time we're leaving that last stitch unworked which is absolutely fine because we're working it now. So we're working one half double crochet followed by two half double crochets. One half double crochet in the next followed by two half double crochets. And we are back to where we started, which is always a good sign. Again, that's not really marking anything. It's just letting us know we've come back to the right point. So I'm just gonna secure color C before we continue round, ready to continue in color A. Now, if like me, you're getting a bit twiddly here, if you just, so just kind of rotate your project around and it will untwist itself and then you can just continue. Remember your ends are the wrong side of your project and the right side shouldn't have any ends showing. Now we're continuing in colour A so I'm just going to bring that loop up and pop that back onto my hook ready for round four. So for round four we're going to start by working one half double crochet into the next two stitches so that was one and two, followed by working two half double crochets in the next. So that's one and two. And we're gonna, oop, and two. And we're gonna repeat this. So we're going to work one half double crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one. And then another half double crochet into the next. And then we're going to work two half double crochets into that next stitch. So that was one and two. So I can secure that colour again because we are finished. So there's no more stitches to work because we've got the marker in the way. And then we're ready to repeat this with the other two colours. So we're working one half double crochet into the next two stitches, followed by two half double crochets into the next. So that's one and two. And then we do that again with one half double crochet into the next stitch and the next. And then we work two half double crochets into the next to work our increase. So I can secure that colour again, my stitch marker, ready to work the final colour, colour C, using those same stitches. And this is when we realise that I've not marked that first stitch. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up in the right place. 
So we're working one half double crochet into the next two stitches. That's one and two, followed by two half double crochets into the next. We repeat that working one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two half double crochets into the next. And that brings us to the end of round four. So I'm going to secure colour C, ready to move in to round five. And you can see that we're getting more of a circular shape. And as we continue to increase this size, it will become even more circular. I'm going to have an untangle here. As always, we're beginning with our colour A, so we can remove that stitch marker. So for round five, we're going to work one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So that's two and three, followed by working two half double crochets into the next as our increase. And we're going to repeat that again. So working one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Before working two half double crochets into the next. I'm going to secure colour A because we have finished with that one now. I'm just going to pop my stitch marker back in ready to pick up colour B. And we're going to repeat this for all three colours. So we're just going to work one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches, followed by an increase. And we repeat that for all three colours. So that's one, two, and three. We then work two half double crochets into the next. So that's one and two. And we repeat it again in the same colour. So work one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Before we work our two half double crochets into that next stitch. One and two. You can then bring that loop up and secure it. And we're going to repeat the same for colour C. So repeat the same for colour C and I'll meet you back at the end of round five. I just worked my final half double crochet increase in colour C, so I'm just going to secure that ready to move on to round six. And you should have a much more circular looking coaster now as opposed to those triangle shapes. So going into round six, we are as always starting with colour A. And for this round, we are going to be working one half double crochet into the first four stitches. Two, three, and four, before we work two half double crochets into the next. So that's one and two. We repeat that again in this colour. So we work one half double crochet into each of the next four stitches three and four, before we work two half double crochets into the next one and two. And we're going to repeat this for all three colours as we've done for the previous rounds. So you're going to do the same in colour B and the same in colour C. And I'll meet you back once you've worked all of your other two colours, ready for us to finish off in round seven which is slightly different, so don't go racing ahead. It's slightly different because we are fastening off in round seven. So we're gonna bring in the height of this round down to our coaster to give us a perfect finish. So just as a reminder, we're working one half double crochet into each of the next four stitches before we work two half double crochets in the next. Work that for the next two colors and I will see you in a moment for us to work our final round. So at the end of round six, your coaster should be looking very much like this. And we're going into our final round, which is round seven. Of course, we are beginning with color A and we're gonna start by working one half double crochet into the next two stitches. 
So that's one and two. We're then going to work one US single crochet, which is the same as a UK double crochet in the next two stitches. So we insert the hook, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through those two loops. We do the same in the next. So we insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through two. Then I'm gonna work two single crochets, which is the same as two UK double crochets into the next. So that's one and reinsert the hook to work a second in the same stitch, single crochet into the next. And then we finish by making one slip stitch into the next stitch. Once you've worked your slip stitch, we can then fasten off this color. So just leave a nice long tail for we and then we can just use our hook to gently pull that through and that will secure our project in place. We're going to repeat this for all three colors. So we'll do the next one together. So we get ready with color C. We start by working one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches and two before working a US single crochet, the same as a UK double crochet, but just inserting, bringing our loop up and pulling through two and the same in the next, working one US single crochet. We then work two US single crochets into the next. So that's one and two. We work one final single crochet into that next stitch before we're going to work a slip stitch in the last. And what this is doing is bringing the curve of the circle down to the height of our current round. Again, we can fasten off, leaving a nice long tail and using our hook just to bring that through. And that creates a nice finish. And we're gonna weave these in together as well. Going to repeat this once again with our final colour, colour C. So we start by making one half double crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one and two before working one US single crochet into the next two stitches and two. We then work two US single crochets into the next stitch, one and two before working our final single crochet into the next and slip stitching into the next stitch to finish our project. Again, I'm just gonna snip that, leaving a nice long tail, use my hook to bring it through. And all that's left for us to do is to sort out all these ends. And there aren't that many considering we've changed colors so many times. Let's weave and finish one of these together because what we don't want is for it to look like we have lumps at the ends of our rounds. And at the minute, unless you pull it really tight, it doesn't look that neat. Yeah. So let's clear all of this out, get our needle on our first colour and weave these ends together to give us the perfect finish. As you can see, if we were just to weave in this end as it is, it looks a bit lumpy at the end is to bring it from the right side so our ends are still there. We're just gonna bring it through the same stitch that we did our slip stitch into before we weave it in. And that will really bring that down to give you the best curve on your circle. You see the difference that that's made if you compare it to this one, if we were just to bring it down and weave it in. When you compare it to that end, it looks so much neater. And then we're ready to turn it over and I'd recommend weaving your ends through the same colour or the back of the same colour of stitches that you just worked. So we're just weaving it through a few of the stitches. And we need to come back and forward three times to really secure and bury those ends. Once you're happy that that's all woven in, I give it a bit of a pull and you can see that we have that nice finished curve that's beautifully finished on that coaster. And when you're happy with that end being woven in, we can just snip that close to the start of the project and that's buried. I'll leave you to do the other two. Just remember to make sure that you start your weaving in 
by bringing the end through your stitch to really pull that down and give you the best possible finish. The best way to deal with these multicolored strands of ends that we have here, we want to keep it nice and neat. So I'm going to pull them through, all through the needle at the same time, apparently. There we go. And I've not got the longest of tails here. And I'm going to just weave under these stitches again. I'm not going to go in and out. I just want to go straight through them all and pull it through the first colour. Then I'm going to do the same. I'm not very short ends here. The same under the next. So just straight under all of those stitches. You just pull them all the way through. And I'm going to do that just once more back through the last colour. It also really does bring in that centre really securely to make sure that nothing is ever going to come undone. You can do them individually if you want to. There we go. And that's those buried in. So we just need to finish off these last couple of ends and our coaster will be complete. Now, as you can see, mine doesn't look like it's perfectly flat. So if you're finding that your ends are curling up like here, like your edges are just curling, if you have a steamer or a steam iron, I would lay them flat, so the wrong side facing up, you know, the side that isn't curling up, and just gently steam them. Don't put direct heat onto them. Just gently steam them and leave them to dry flat. Uh, it will relax the stitches and ensure that your coaster is always looking flat. If you can position it flat, it is a circle. <laughs> so it is just a case of making sure that once your stitches are relaxed and in place, you can steam it. And there we have it. So thank you for joining me for this crochet tutorial. I hope that you've enjoyed making your very own spiral coasters. I'd love to know which colours you've used. Yeah, you can kind of go crazy with these colours. Get your ends woven in, snap a picture and share it with me over on Instagram or join us over in the community group and join us there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. And I will see you in the next one.